Every year, I tend to forget how awful the internet becomes. It's not the season change or school getting out either. It's always E3, the overhype creating, fanboy inducing, anti consumer enveloping time of the year. And with that, I end up with many quotes from the mess that's made. I'll go ahead and throw some of those new quotes in there for you guys to enjoy. Let's begin. There is not actual difference between the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One or PS3 and PS4. A proof of that is an experiment that a computer gamer did. He built a PC with the same capability of the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One and guess what? Almost no differences, just a little increase in FPS and resolution. So this Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro are the actual consoles of this generation because they make the difference. They cross that line and that spread this generation from the one we know since 2006. It literally took almost 11 years since the release of the Xbox 360. Perfect. Okay, there are a few issues here. Firstly, every time a new console comes out, there are always people who say that it's a thousand times more powerful than the last. Then the new one comes out, and all of a sudden, all the old consoles were the exact same. Secondly, you have to remember that the Xbox One and the Xbox One X are still Xbox Ones. Microsoft strictly said that no games will go to the Scorpio or One X that won't go to the original Xbox One. Therefore, all this power, it's all going to resolution and frame rates. I'm glad this is happening, don't get me wrong, but for it being a new generation, it's kind of shooting itself in the foot here. Is PC the platform that's plagued with unfinished, buggy, no good indie games where you spend hours upon hours knocking down trees and beating on rocks? Oh yeah, consoles! Isn't that the platform that just has those first person shooters with stealth elements and no originality at all? See how easy it is to stereotype a platform even if it isn't true? Sounds kind of stupid, doesn't it? Optimization will happen because consoles still dominate the gaming market. Ryzen is going into the Scorpio and the PS5 for sure. So optimizations now will pay dividends for years to come. Wait, what? How do you not understand how dumb that sounds? I mean, you had time to go back and look before you post, you know that. Firstly, the PS5 hasn't even been announced by Sony. Last I heard about the PS5 was when Sony said they may not even make another console. Despite that, if a game is optimized for Ryzen chips, and PC gamers have Ryzen chips, there's only benefits to be had. It's not going to magically work for one CPU and then not work for the same CPU. But the dumbest thing here, they're not even using Ryzen at all. The Xbox One Scorpio will be more powerful than most PC gaming computers. This is an actual fact, Master Race equals Xbox. Okay, look, on paper, this is not untrue. But for Sony and Microsoft, even Nintendo, this was the norm. If you look back, almost every console that came out was either above or at least on par with the technology curve up until the 360. After that, consoles kept coming out that were far weaker than today's standards. It wasn't until recently it seems that Sony and Microsoft are trying to get back onto today's technology curve. And that's not a bad thing, guys. They're offering their consumers a platform that finally competes with gaming computers. However, with technology moving as fast as it does, this cycle of them coming out with a new update every two years might get a bit annoying, not to mention expensive. I'm curious to see how they keep up this trend without alienating their consumers. You don't want to trust PCs. They turn on you and stop working. If you ever get a chance to get a Mac, take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. Sir, what are you doing? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Fake PC gamers are people who play on PC using controllers. If you hate consoles so much, stop trying to emulate them. Use keyboard and mouse like proper PC gamers. Never used an Xbox controller in my life and never will. I'm more master race than all you plebs put together. <laughs> you know what? You're right. I'm gonna throw my controller away right now. No console has ever used a keyboard and that makes us better. Oh. By the way, if you're a PC gamer who hates consoles for such petty reasons, you're a prick. At least consoles have exclusives other than 2D indie space simulators made by 15 year olds in the Steam Greenlight. <sighs> Star Citizen, Arma, The Ball, Ballistic Overkill, Blackweight, Carnivore's Dino Hunter, Clone Drone in the Danger Zone, Contagion, Clandestine, DayZ, The Culling, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Gang Beast, Gary's Mod, Heavy Bullets, Human Fall Flat, The Mean Greens, No More Room in Hell, Paint the Town Red, Primal Carnage, Receiver, Robot Roller Derby, Disco Dodgeball, Slime Rancher, Super Hot, Sorber Sauce, Witchet, We Happy Few. <laughs> I could go forever. 
These games are not 2D, are not exclusively indie space simulators, and are made by teams. And these are only just a few I listed from my library. I don't care what people say, Xbox for life. I'm ignorant and will willingly make a bad decision because I'm loyal to a company. <laughs> You can't compare to Steam to consoles. Steam has a monopoly on the PC industry and doesn't need dedicated servers. What? What the hell? So, Steam, like, runs off of... nothing? Valve has servers, otherwise their servers can't be up. But I know what you're getting at. The whole idea, at least I think, is that Valve doesn't have as many servers to run compared to Sony or Microsoft, but that can't actually be determined. As far as I've researched, Valve has around 200 physical servers just dedicated to Steam. Microsoft said they had 300,000 virtual servers, which yes, is a bigger number, but they're not as good. The average gaming computer can run a few thousand virtual servers. And as far as I've looked, Sony doesn't divulge that information. Regardless, they all need servers and they all cost money. Valve simply doesn't force you to pay for theirs. PC platform is like poison for gaming industry. It produces more piracy than actual buyers, and developers don't get their hard-earned money. CD Projekt Red lost 15% of their sales because of the piracy on PC. That's why developers are selling DLCs and unfinished games. It's true, you can't deny it. That's why Rockstar hesitates to release their games on PC. It's clear. Ooh, <laughs> you're one of those guys who literally spits out emotionally attached lies. But alright, I'll call your bluff. Let's start with CD Projekt Red. I have an article here where the developer talks about piracy when it comes to The Witcher 3. We don't like when people steal our product, but we are not going to, to chase them and put them in prison, but uh, we'll think hard what to make to convince them. And uh, convince them in a very positive way so that they will buy the product next time, they will be happy with our game, and they will tell their friends uh, not to pirate it. And funnily enough, uh, the more we proceed this way, the more we see then again on forums and reddits and whatnot, we see that there is a guy saying, hey, where, where can I download Witcher 3 Wild Hunt from? And then there is 10 people bashing them. Oh, you fucko, do not download the game. These guys are fair. They're the only fair, fair guys in the industry. Uh, you should go and buy it. And so um, I'm not sure if this guy will buy it or he will find this link, but still, it's a very positive attitude and it's, it's excellent word of mouth. The Witcher 3 sold over 25 million copies with 30% of that coming from the PC. When it comes to unfinished games, this depends on the developer and this behavior should not be supported. Lastly, when it comes to Rockstar, they aren't hesitant to put their games on PC. They're smart and a bit scummy. See, Rockstar likes to take a double dipping approach where they're silent about a game, announce it on the consoles, let everyone buy it, and then announce the PC version down the line. Those who prefer PC but bought it on the consoles will rebuy a copy and get it on their preferred platform. Rockstar has also spoke about piracy as their DRM is very powerful and I don't even think a hacked version of GTA 5 is even available. And even if there is, playing online would be impossible. People who can play at 30 FPS have superior eye than those who can't because they can adjust to both 30 and 60 FPS easily. Hashtag fact. I have no problem playing at 30 FPS as long as there's not too much fluctuation. You seem to be under the impression that some people can't adjust to 30 FPS. How many times do I have to say this? The human eye is one of the most advanced ocular cameras in the world. We can adjust to many different frame rates with ease. We are even so advanced that we can actually tell the difference between these frame rates and decide accordingly which ones we like the best. There's no one out there wondering why the hell when he's watching a movie, all he sees is a black screen. Except blind people, that's, that, yeah, that probably happens to them. PC can lag easily unless you have a very expensive computer or don't go on pretty much any website at all because now every website has malware. All right, class, today we're going to talk about lag and how lag occurs. If you have a cheap computer, you lag. If you go onto the web, you lag. However, if you spend a ton of money on a computer, then websites with lag leave you alone. You see, lag is deeply afraid of money. Any questions, hmm? Class dismissed. A Switch is more portable, but a laptop can be as portable. You can easily put them both in a backpack. It takes the same amount of time to put a laptop in a backpack compared to putting a switch in a backpack. Or your pocket. You are not fitting a switch in your pocket. Which would be more comfortable to play on publicly? They're the f same. 
No, though. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I don't even know why that one made me laugh so hard. It just seems so defeated. No, though. Seriously, guys, having a Pentium G4560 and a GTX 1050 doesn't mean you're a member of the PC Master Race. But it does make you a PC peasant, actually. A real PC Master Race is having a Core i5 or i7 and GTX 1070 or 1080 Ti. No, for the love of God, stop. If you game on your PC and you love doing it, you can call yourself anything you want. There aren't any contrived stipulations to it. That would be like if I said you're not a high school graduate unless you went to prom or threw your graduation cap in the air. The only stipulation that I'll put on this is if you say crap like this, you can't call yourself Master Ace, but you can call yourself a Master Douchebag. Okay, so you know how Apple has really retarded ways of selling their products? Well, it seems their consumers have caught on. Apple GTX 980 Ti 6GB Mac Pro boot screen 4K 5K faster than Pascal 1080 680 7970 $460. To be honest, it's actually kind of perfect. Misleading, blatant lying, overpricing. This guy's going places. They rather play these crappy Steam games on their computer than buying actual video games. Okay, so what do you mean by actual games? Are you talking about first-person shooters? Because we have more of those than you do. Are you talking about adventure games? Again, more on PC. Are you talking about MOBAs? MMOs? 3D shooters? Racing games? Stealth? Simulators? What? Oh! Oh, you're talking about AAA games! The ones that are reskins of the same game over and over? Yeah, we have those too. I don't know what you're talking about here! The number one reason why PC fans want certain PlayStation exclusives games is because so they can brag about how good it looks and plays better on PC. So sad and pathetic. Was this one written by Donald Trump? Okay, so look, here's the issue with exclusives. Companies are paid by Sony or Microsoft to keep games restricted. Sony and Microsoft do less work for your money and you buy right into it. Not only are they restricting you from games that you could be playing, which as a gamer should not make you happy, but they also act like holding these games hostage is a benefit to you. If all games went to every platform, Sony and Microsoft would actually have to try to compete for their consumers, but you let them take the easy way out. See, I'd much prefer to see what Sony and Microsoft would do for their consumers if they didn't get to use such scummy business practices. In regards to your quote though, no, we don't want to brag. We just want to play video games. We're gamers. Okay, so I know this one isn't real, but when my brother sent it to me, I knew I had to share it with you guys. Congratulations at Xbox on the reveal of a brand new Xbox. Hashtag Xbox E3. Thank you, but it was not new, just improved specs, no design change. Yeah, that's what new is. We've done that for years. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes I feel like companies are actually this transparent. As usual, I'm going to leave you guys with a fun little video. I have here for you today one of the whiniest and ironically most childish video game haters I've ever seen. Enjoy. There's a layer of patheticness here, though, that no one is talking about. Namely, I don't care if video games are sexist or not sexist or politically correct. Video games are for little kids. Why are adults playing video games? My brother-in-law got my kids a Batman game for, uh, for Christmas. They can't play it. It's for adults only. Batman? <laughs> when I was a little kid, we watched Batman on TV because we wanted to be tough and fight bad guys. Now you're 32 and you're sitting there, I'm Batman, I, I'm Superman, I can fly. Look at my Wolverine shirt. He has claws. You read comic books? That is for people who are special, okay? The, the, in the old days, you lived in the basement because you were mentally handicapped. When we saw 12-year-olds playing Star Wars with 9-year-olds, we went, poor bastard, oh well. Uh, I guess he'll be living with his mommy forever. 